Hi guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, and I do mean over the top beautiful postcard perfect day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization on this outrageously gorgeous. It is a Sunday morning, July 3rd, 2022, and uh, while everyone else on the planet is out celebrating America's birthday coming up tomorrow, uh, doing what I try to do every Sunday, I'm not sure this is exactly a uh, exactly a sermon or not from some outfit called the Tribune. I don't know what town from I think I might have heard of this woman, Joanna Tavares. Okay. Uh, Joanna Tavares is the Tribune's American Association for the Advancement of Science Mass Media Fellow. There you go. She is completing her doctorate degree in earth science at UC Irvine. And uh, so what she's doing here is she is answering readers' questions about climate change. And uh, this, uh, this could have been a one-word answer. And she is looking at the question this week, today. <clears throat> is having babies bad for the planet? Is having babies bad for the planet? Well, let me help out uh, Joanna. She is the mother of one. Joanna is a breeder, but she is stopping at one. And so she is trying to get a paycheck <clears throat> from the mainstream media. Uh, I just interviewed uh, my buddy, you know, that Professor Jeremy Jimenez, talking about why people cannot be honest about talking about overpopulation as the biggest problem on the planet. This is the most prime example of what Jeremy was talking about. Why this woman, this climatologist, cannot answer this question in one word. Take a guess what the one word is. Is having babies bad for the planet? The answer to the question, Joanna, is yes. Yes, Joanna, having babies is bad for the planet. Not only is it bad for the planet, it is bad for the baby. It is bad for the parents. Okay? Uh, having babies or being born uh, is the single worst thing for yourself if you're being born, your parents, and of course the planet. The number one worst thing for the planet is having babies. So here's the second part of the headline and it's the second part of the problem. Here is the link between population and climate change. Now, okay, so she's a climatologist or getting ready to be one. So obviously I guess Joanna has a reason to, uh, you know, to look into this one area, but what it does is this headline reinforces the notion, again, that I was talking about with my buddy Jeremy in that interview a couple of weeks ago, that climate change is the only possible bad thing that having 8 billion people on the, 8 billion humans on the planet is the only problem that 8 billion humans is climate change. One more time, if Joanna is not aware of this, uh, or the editors of the Tribune, the link between population, I would say overpopulation and climate change, for all intents and purposes, means nothing. I hope this uh, windy day is not, uh, good Lord, I hope this isn't going to mess up this uh, Joanna's rant too much, uh, these beautiful summer breezes. So anyway, one more time for anyone 
trying to develop a brain uh, if climate change was a non-starter. If climate change meant nothing, if every July day could be like it is in the Finger Lakes of New York with a high of 76 and a low of 52 and humidity of about 15 percent, okay, it would make no difference. All right, there are plenty of other ways that having babies can kill this planet with climate, if climate change were non-existent, if having eight billion babies uh, did not cause one bit of climate change, it makes no difference, okay? Do we get it now? It's not about climate change. Climate change is one little subset of the equation. But anyway, with all of that disclaimer, I'm going to try to shut up now. But first we're going to hear with someone who is trying to form a brain. This is Laurie from San Luis Obispo. Laurie, take it away. Laurie is apparently a little more intelligent than Joanna. She needs to. Uh, Laurie, would you come talk to me and let me explain it to you? All right, take it away, Laurie. Quote, no one ever talks about the relationship of the world population and climate change. When the two really go hand in hand, the world population is nearing 8 billion people now. And no matter how much we try to not leave a carbon footprint just existing in this world add, adds to climate change with needing food, water, heating, and things of that sort. People don't seem to be concerned about having large families, but it affects us all when people are still having four or five kids. Just a thought, just a thought. Laurie sharing the most intelligent thought anywhere in this. Uh, and once again, let me try to explain this as kind of what I was just saying, the carbon footprint. People do not understand the difference between the carbon footprint and the ecological environmental footprint, okay? Here is your footprint. Uh, your carbon footprint is one toe, okay? Maybe even the little toe. This is your carbon footprint or your baby's carbon footprint. This is your entire footprint. The carbon footprint is one subset of the entire footprint, Laurie. If you erase the carbon footprint, there is still plenty of footprint left to kill the planet when there's 8 billion, well, 16 billion, I guess, footprints stomping the planet to death. I'm really going to try to butt out of here. All right, now we are going to hear from Joanna Tavares commenting on Laurie's intelligent comment. Dear Laurie, a few days ago one of my best friends, Mary, called me to share some exciting news. She is pregnant with her third child. As a climate conscious person, can I be happy for Mary? In other words, how many children are too many children when it comes to a family, a country, or a planet? The answer to the question, how many children are too many when it comes to a family, a country, or a planet, the answer is one. Okay? The answer is one. If your answer is two, it's twice as bad as one. If it's three, it's three times as bad. 
okay, there is one person who has a carbon and environmental footprint of exactly 0.00. That is a person who has never been born. Apparently, uh, Joanna has never considered that thought. It thought has never entered her head. Never thought of it. Okay. Although it may seem like no one ever talks about the relationship of the world population and climate change, I can assure you that climate scientists and activists talk quite a lot about that link. However, we don't often air this discussion in the public sphere. Mm. The most poignant reason why experts may be wary to talk publicly about this <clears throat> is the fact that I would not be getting published in the mainstream media if I were honest about the subject. Okay, I made that up. The most poignant reason, according to Joanna writing for the mainstream media, why the experts may be wary to talk publicly about this is the fact, is the opinion, <clears throat> that the topic has been repeatedly co-opted as part of racist, xenophobic, and misogynistic narratives used to justify coercive and unjust policies or criminal activities throughout history. Of course, the single biggest criminal activity throughout history is breeding. And then there is the fact that despite what certain authors, what certain authors, okay, William Catton, Paul Ehrlich, uh, Eric Weissman, and uh, I'm not sure I'm an author, uh, Michael Rupert, uh, despite what, oh, uh, William Reese, despite what certain authors with qualifications a hell of a lot more uh, impressive than Joanna's, those certain authors have said in the past, this, here we go, my favorite sentence in the story, we have no scientific consensus on the role human population plays when it comes to climate change. Yes. Okay. I wonder how many of the, it would be interesting to, you know, see how many, anyway, I'm not going to go. Okay, anyway, moving on. As a species, okay, this is Joanna actually doing a little bit of, of a nod to all the other ways having babies is killing the planet. As a species, we, meaning humans, no other species, are overutilizing natural resources, driving other species to extinction, both of which could be, will be going on with or without climate change. Nothing to do with climate change, okay? Well, I mean, it does now, but you know what I'm saying. It, uh, if climate change were not, not existent, as a species, we would still be over-utilizing natural resources and driving other species to extinction. And then she would throw in, which is true, and now even changing the planet's climate with our pollution. But is that a direct consequence of the increasing number of people on Earth? Hmm. Let's see. I don't, when she says that, I guess she means increasing the planet's climate with our pollution. And in case you did not hear me, Joanna, there is one human being on the person who is on the planet who is not contributing to climate change through pollution. That is a person who is never born. 
The answer to the question, is that a direct consequence of the increasing number of people on Earth? The answer to the question is yes. It is the single most obvious in your clueless moron face, Joanna, direct link to climate change and every other one of the planetary boundaries. Or are these trends symptoms of a bigger problem? Yeah, a, a, a bigger problem than 8 billion people. Hmm, yes. Let's look for a bigger problem. The, 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 the population of planet Earth is the biggest problem on the planet since the planet was born. Okay. Then we get into the big question, which we have been debating for years on Collapse Chronicles. How many people can the Earth sustain? Can the Earth sustain? And this is her short answer. Nobody knows what the optimum number of humans on Earth is. And if I had a bullshit detected button, I would be hitting it. I know one person who knows exactly what the optimum number of people on this, humans on this planet is. That would be Sam Mitchell. And the number is zero people. The optimum number of human beings on planet Earth is zero human beings. And I'm sure I could find a few people, probably one one hundredth of one percent of the planet's human population to agree with that no shit Sherlock assertion. But if you were to ask the question, what, how many, let's see, what the optimum number of humans on Earth, uh, you ask, Every single one of our fellow Earthlings, you know, with the possible exception of uh, the, these little furry things, these little fur babies, you know, but you ask any one of our free-roaming wild Earthlings, fellow Earthlings, the optimum number of humans on this planet, every one of them, okay, without blinking, would tell you the optimum number of humans on planet Earth is zero. Okay? But, uh, you know, it's often been tossed around that we did somewhat okay. Uh, you know, for about the first 300,000 years of our existence with a population under one billion before the Industrial Revolution. That's a good start. I mean, one billion is a good start. Okay. And then this one. Uh, I, I, I am getting so sick and tired of this specious argument. We know that humans are, cons that humans are consuming natural resources. All right. This woman does understand she's getting a doctorate after all. She has figured out that humans are consuming natural resources 1.75 times faster than what our planet's ecosystems can regenerate. So clearly we are above Earth's carrying capacity. Hmm. Okay. Clearly humans are above Earth's carrying capacity. Okay, she understands that. However, however, that may be because certain groups of people have been utilizing more resources than others. Scientists have calculated how many Earths would be needed if everyone on the planet lived like the residents of certain countries. We would need 5.1 Earths if everyone lived like Americans or 3.0 Earths if, uh, yeah, three Earths if we live like Germans, but only 0 0.8 Earths if we lived like Indians, meaning from India, or one half of one Earth if we lived like Angolans. I invite anybody 
you know, going going through this crap. Okay, this this, this specious, stupid argument to defend uh, having kids. I guess if you were an Angolan, I invite anyone listening to this crap to go over to India, go over to Angola, and interview every single one of the remaining fellow Earthlings in India or Angola and get their opinion on how many planets, uh, you know, what I'm saying. You may be thinking, you may be thinking clearly, we want everyone to live safely, comfortably, and more like the people in developed countries. So we should somehow reduce global population and ensure better distribution of wealth. Wow. You may be thinking we should somehow reduce global population. Ha. Uh, Imagine that, that some people might be thinking dangerous thoughts. There are two ways to do it. Increase the death rate, decrease the birth rate. Enough said. But, but, <coughs> could we, operating within our current political economic systems, sustain the high standards of living achieved by wealthy people in developed nations without the exploitation of cheap labor and deficient environmental regulations in developing countries, you know, such as the United States after the Supreme Court's latest ruling, you know, those countries with deficient environmental regulations, such as like third world countries like this one, Probably not. Probably not. Our current system, meaning our current global industrial economic system, is the one she's talking about, make low-cost imports of natural resources and products from those poorer nations possible, which benefits us folks at the top of the food chain. The reality is okay, we're getting a dose of reality, is that if we want to protect the environment and make the world a better place for all, we will need to reconsider much more than the number of humans on Earth. Again, if you ask any other species on the a fellow earthing on the planet yes if they want to protect the environment and make the world a better place for the 10 million species of them compared to the one species of us uh, they do not need to reconsider much more than the number of humans on Earth. That is the one thing that every one of our fellow Earthlings needs to consider. There is no reconsidering anything about it. Okay, so now let's get personal. Is my friend Mary harming the planet by having another child? Mary is a white, college-educated American with a middle-class income. So, is my friend harming the planet by having a third child? The answer to the question is your friend Mary is harming the planet by having a third child more than any other way she is harming the planet, hands down, bar none. So, the mother of one says, well, it depends on how you look at it. Is Mary any guiltier of planetary destruction than Beyonce or Bill Gates, who each have three children of their own? Should Mary be shamed for fulfilling her dream of having a family, while Elon Musk, the richest person in the world, has seven of them? The answer 
to the question, she should definitely be shamed for fulfilling her dream of having a family, and Elon Musk should have his balls cut off. Okay? We need to share, we need to shame Mary, we need to castrate Elon Musk. That's the difference. Shaming versus castration. All right? And while we're at it, we should castrate all of at least Elon's uh, male children. This, this argument means nothing. It is even more specious than that whole, ar that, that whole stupid argument uh, about uh, how many Angolans, you know, anyway. means nothing. It is a red herring. Every single human being on this planet has an ecological footprint. The fact is the environmental impact disparity between the wealthy and the poor that exist among different countries also exist here in the United States. Yes, and here in the U.S., people in the top 10% of the income pyramid produce 7.3 times as the annual emissions generated by their fellow citizens in the bottom 50%. In Europe, the 10% richest people produce six times more emissions than those in the bottom half. Those in East Asia produce 13 times more emissions. I'm hearing all sorts of arguments for forced sterilization of the rich. We don't have to eat the rich, we just need to sterilize them. If we keep working our way up the privilege ladder, there are fewer and fewer people left to blame. No, there's not. Perhaps it is time we start looking at the problem from a different angle. Uh, yes, other than the, the forced sterilization of the rich. An excellent place to start. Yes. So then she goes through this blah, blah, blah. Uh, about why people at least used to, the, the, the old excuses for having large, uh, large families. I'm going to skip through that. Uh, okay. But over the past century, the mechanization of production at all levels and developments in modern medicine, sanitation, nutrition, transportation, and communication have revolutionized the way we humans live. As a result, fewer babies and children die. Can you say the old people live longer and global population growth, despite the crap you read in the mainstream media, is now exponential. In 1900, there were 2 billion people living on Earth, and life expectancy then was 31 and a half years. Now, there are almost 8 billion of us, and life expectancy is 73 years. Something else started to change. Many people now had access to more options on how to live their lives. Yes, okay, blah, blah, blah. So the good news, well, I put that phrase in, in the 1950s, like when I was the last of five children, the average Earth family had five children. Now they have less than three. Yes. Uh, while the absolute global population is still increasing, the rate of that increase is slowing down, and experts predict it will level off by 2100. I'm not going to dive into that uh, argument. Uh, then we start to get... Uh, to the bottom of this, uh, and we come up to the tired old saw, just let women choose how many children they have. Now, of course, 
uh, as I mentioned, if my mother, if it had been my mother's choice, I never would have been born, and neither would have my brother right above me. My mother in the 1950s, she wanted to stop after three. She said, my God, enough is enough. But it was my father who uh, insisted. I mean, I, I, to this, I mean, I don't get this. My father insisted that my mother, who was a very uh, independent, educated uh, woman, have two more children when she had no desire. She was 39 when I was born, for God's sake. Uh, I admit, I, I literally should never have been born, and I would not have been born uh, had it been up to my mother instead of my father, or my mother just could stand up to that son of a bitch, and I wouldn't be here today. All right. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, so then she talks about all of the bright green lies. But if we want these bright green lie solutions to take root, we will also need to face the failures of globalization, fix systems that are not working, and protect women's rights everywhere in the world. Some people, like my friend Mary, want to have three, four, or more children. I am absolutely thrilled for her. There you go. <coughs> A budding climatologist writing for the mainstream media is absolutely thrilled and cheering on any white, privileged American to have three, four, or more children. You're reading it right here in the mainstream media on the 4th of July. I have other friends who chosen to have no children at all. They want to focus on other aspects of life. I am absolutely thrilled for them as well. I always knew that I wanted to have one child only, and I have greatly benefited from modern health care and reproductive rights, well, former reproductive rights, to live a fulfilling life according to my choices. I can only wish the same level of dignity and respect for every person on this planet for their own sake, mm, of our shared future on this blue marble we call home. Yes, uh, now, do you have a climate change question? For Joanna Tavares. Uh, Joanna, uh, not, not, anyway, I, bet I can't even go there. Uh, anyway, I was going to read some of these comments, but I uh, don't have time anyway, guys. Uh, little uh, strip tease action here. You wonder why. Sorry. A climatologist in the mainstream media essentially on the 4th of July cheering on any privileged white American. I mean as long as it's a female privileged white American to have as many kids as you want and blame it all on Bill Gates and Elon Musk. It is Bill Gates and Elon Musk's fault. It is their children killing the planet. It is not your children, unless you are Bill Gates or Elon Musk, your child is just a joyous little bundle of joy. Speaking of which, uh, I have a little uh, 
bundle of joy here at the Airbnb this week and uh, we're going to teach this young man how to go fishing today. I am going to be uh, hanging out with a five-year-old and his uh, little haughty single mother. My guys. This little dog, did you survive that? You want to go hang out with a five-year-old child the rest of this beautiful day and catch some fish?